We are asking for others, people who are committed to the cause of the gospel, committed to Christ, to help us in acquiring the building next door. If they do that, then all that we'll say to them, come and see what we are doing here. I'd love to get more people involved. There's so many people out there I'd like to help, but I, first of all, I need more help from God. I need more experience. And I think I need help from someone outside, someone to bring in ideas and uh, new things for us to do. The Leadership Academy will teach people how to help themselves. I think this is one of the most important things you can do to a person is show him how to help himself. But to do that, we need help. If everybody that can help a little bit helps just a little bit, I think we can solve a lot of these problems in this neighborhood. Hi, I'm Harry Smith. You normally see me on CBS This Morning or other CBS News broadcasts. But today, I want to talk to you not as a newsman, but as a neighbor. Like you, I go to church. Possibly like you, I was brought up in the Reformed Church in America, the RCA. In the Reformed Church, faith is expressed through the work of its members and its member churches. One example is this innovative, effective education program for children from the poorest county in Illinois. God has given them all something that they can contribute, you know, and not let them feel that well, I'm not anything. You, are all, you know, everybody has something to contribute, and we stress that no matter what the class is. The Slidell part of the program, which means Christian Institute for Developing Altruistic Leaders, the purpose of that program is to develop a a leadership among black people that is willing to give of themselves rather than simply take from others, but just simply willing to say, hey, my purpose in life is to help people. The thing that we try to instill in the young people at Sidell is that their responsibility in life is not to get all that they can, but to give all they can. I don't think a person would like to be around someone who always is, you know, just money hungry and everything. And um, I think it's good, you know, just to be giving instead of receiving all the time. Most majority of the students, by the time they leave their senior year, if they're not studying a complete three hours, they're studying at least two mm -hmm. a night. Because they know that um, we're not going to give it to them. they got to work. Mm -hmm. And one of the main complaints when they first come in said, you know, this is too hard. But, you know, we tell them you got to live life, and life is hard. The 22 graduates we've had, 21 have went on to institutions of higher education. Um, now, what college I have in mind is University of Illinois, Champaign. Radio and television broadcasting as a major and theater arts as a minor. I love to act. <laughs> we have, uh, just this year, we've initiated the, the grade school because we felt that it was imperative to get these kids when they were very young and start indoctrinating them when they are preschoolers that your purpose in life is to give, to give, to give, and to give. They haven't learned yet. The quote importance of being successful with money. They haven't learned that, so we don't have to try to unlearn them. I truly believe that the Lord sent me here, and uh, it's a lot more relaxing and peaceful. I enjoyed. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Um, did take a cut in salary, um, but I enjoy it. I do. I enjoy it. And I'm not satisfied with a Seidel in Pembroke. They gotta be Seidels in Chicago and in, in New York and, in, and even in Iowa. Christ gave us a mandate. Go and love people and love is helping people. I always tell my daughters, love finds a way. Love does not look for excuses. Love says, I'll help you and I'll help you and I'll find a way to help you. Oh, I want to be a person who loves people. That is what I really want to be. Because if I am a person who loves people, God will be 
so very proud of me. Okay, let's give one a uh, goodbye kiss. For years, many of us have stayed pretty isolated. We've kept up our hometown church, and we've contributed to something loosely called mission, but perhaps we didn't really understand what that mission was, and that's what I want to talk to you about. A couple of years ago, the RCA embarked on an ambitious project to bring into focus just what its mission is, to channel its resources into programs that can and do work. And they call this project putting people in mission. We sang the song in, in, in church today, uh, who knows what the color of God is, we do know that whatever the color is, it's the color of love, and this is what Church of Good News is all about to me. It is Sunday school, we learn about God and Mary and a lot of other people, and we learn about what our community is like and we have a lot of news on our community. I just like this church because it's great. But most of our people in our congregation and in our community uh, own very little. A lot of things we take for granted. You may have a home or a car or this or that. And for many people to, to be able to now say, you know, we have a piece of land. Uh, I, you know, quite often uh, we'll see people uh, you know, walking by the piece of land and, and, and pointing to it and telling a neighbor or a friend, you know, that's, that's my land. Uh, we're going to build a church there. Well, we really need, need a new building. I feel great if when it comes true, you know. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Warwick Conference Center. I think you'll enjoy yourself here this weekend. We have 450 acres, so you can go out and take a walk. And the, the Christian life is a renewing process, and this is a place, one of the many places it's possible to renew, not only individually, but with the people with whom we worship on a Sunday, every Sunday by Sunday. When people come to Warwick, they go away as different persons. Perhaps, first of all, because of the beauty of the surroundings, the peacefulness of it, and then beyond that, the kind of programs which are sponsored here. People getting together who didn't know each other previously, coming together in a group, singing together, praying together, studying together, so that they go away feeling renewed. I think that this area here really demonstrates the needs that we have at Warwick Conference Center. Most of the money will go into behind the scenes equipment and needs of the conference center, such as with the electrical wiring, which is ancient, outdated, it does not meet our needs any longer. Oftentimes we will have whole areas of the building without power uh, because lines have been burned out. Because, uh, we draw too much electricity off of these wires. This needs to be replaced just for uh, health and safety reasons. Here you see an old-fashioned hot water heater. Uh, this is symbolic of a lot of the equipment that we have here, which in its day served, its, served this conference center very well, but uh, needs to be taken out, needs to be replaced with something modern uh, so that we can keep our heating costs uh, down. I see Warwick as a place for the entire denomination to come. Uh, we hope that we are able to bring in speakers and people who are skilled at certain things and then advertise to the national church and have them send their people here and together we'll struggle with the challenges in front of us. What we've asked people in mission to do is, is to fund an educational ministry component of our ministry to the homeless. The first part and the most important part of the program is to let people experience firsthand our ministry. More importantly than to experience our work is for them to experience the lives of the poor, to hear their stories firsthand, to know their struggles. Because I believe that that's the first way that you learn anything is through experience. Then we want to, to, to take that experience and put it in dialogue with Scripture. 
And if I had a chance to say anything to people who had any doubts, either about putting people in mission, or about giving more money, or about helping poor people because maybe they deserve to be poor, or about helping people who can't help themselves because they shouldn't have picked up the first drink, or they shouldn't have been born retarded, or whatever their problem is. I want people to know that I've buried 24 people in the last year and a half here, you know, and that I have cut down from hangings three people myself underneath the ferry terminal, um, in the basement of a building, um, in an abandoned building. And I want people to know what that's like, to have looked at a life and known that we couldn't save that person, you know, that we failed, that because we didn't have enough time or enough volunteers or enough money or enough whatever it took to meet the needs of that person, um, that that person's life was lost. And, and if people could just see the number of people we've buried and, and, and touch them the way, the way I've had to touch their bodies, both warm and cold, and lay them in the ground, I think that, 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 that they would do more than give money. I think that they would, would come out and give it themselves. These and a hundred other projects have met the test. They're doable, they work, they touch lives, they solve problems. They also cost money, about $25 million. But over the three years of the Putting People in Mission project with church members across the country pitching in, that's a reasonable goal, and it's a mission the Reformed Church can accomplish. Make no mistake, projects like these do work. RCA General Secretary Ed Mulder can testify to that. Parkersburg, Iowa was a special place for me because I spent crucial years here. My father died when I was eight years old, so my mother and I then moved from Minnesota to Parkersburg, Iowa. It was necessary for her to go to work as a domestic. From 11 to 13, I stayed with my uncle and aunt, and my aunt became ill, and it wasn't possible for me to be there. And so other arrangements had to be made. I was totally on my own. One of the people who really helped me was a man by the name of Claude Shook. He purchased the restaurant, which today is Polly's Restaurant in Parkersburg. And I began by washing dishes, by going down in the morning at seven and washing dishes. And that's how I got my breakfast. And then at noon, I went up and came from the school, which is only a couple blocks away, and would wash dishes like mad uh, until quarter to one, grab a bite to eat, go back to school, and then that would repeat that again after school. But in the restaurant, there was a teacher who had graduated from Central College, and I would wait on him, and he, would, he said, you know, you need to think about going to school, and about going to college, and I said, well, I don't think I could do that and because I don't have the money to do that. He said, well, you can get work scholarships and you probably could, could do it. I then became a recipient of that kind of a scholarship grant that other people had made available in my junior and senior year and all through the seminary years. I guess that's why today I'm so excited about putting people in mission. That's why I really am excited about the endowments that are a part of putting people in mission for minority students, for seminary students, so that people will be encouraged to invest in our youth. It costs a great deal today. When I think about Claude Shook, when I think about other people like that, I wish somehow it was, would be possible to go back to them and say, thank you. Thank you for the help that you gave to me at a very critical time in my life. Because I realized that, that if it hadn't been for those kind of gifts and grants, I probably would have dropped out. There was a scholarship there at a crucial time for a young Ed Mulder. Today is a crucial time for our students from New York to San Francisco and for the projects you know are critically important to the work of the church. You'll be asked shortly to make a pledge. It's a significant challenge, an important mission, and it can't be done without you. <laughs>